There we go. Great. Okay, so I'd like to convene the um, the special board meeting of the Menlo Park Fire Protection District uh, on January 24th, 2023 at 6.01. Um, roll call, please, Michelle. Director Bernstein. Present. Director Bloom. Here. Director Crawley. Present. Director Jones. Here. Director Solano. Here. Great. Looks like we have a quorum and everyone is here, so thank you. Uh, we can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America. and, and to the republic, republic for which, which it stands, stands one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Yeah. all. Thank you. So we really only have one item today, um, which is to discuss and establish board goals and priorities for 2023. But before we get started, I just wanna thank Gary for helping with this. I had intended to send out the communication piece, but I actually got called in to do some translation for the Chinese farm workers who were displaced and evacuated in Half Moon Bay. And for whatever reason, and I'd actually visited the farm before, so that's why they called me. So Gary, thank you so much for, I'm going to pitch hitting right now during the no time problem. where I, I just kind of needed that support. <laughs> Happy so, to help. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so as Gary mentioned in his communication piece, you know, we're going to be, hopefully y'all have um, read it and, and have come up with like three to five ideas that we might want to put out there for the goals for 2023. And so we're looking at goals for just this year that we can um that we can accomplish with the chief and hopefully the chief the chief's goals um that he sent out were received by you um so i think that maybe the the way to kick this off before we each take our turn um as to what our ideas are and, and you know discuss our ideas individually would maybe be um chief are you here do you want to just kind of talk about your goals that you sent to the board sure. from an operational yeah. standpoint and yeah. what you hope to achieve? Yeah, thank you, director. Um, so, yeah, what, what I've done um, previously in my last department is try and share with the organization some of the things that we want to try and accomplish in the, in the next calendar year. And so that's what I uh, developed internally with our executive staff and you know, categorize it into four broad categories. Some of it is strategic, but it's, sorry, some of it is strategic. Some of it is kind of just our work plan. Some of it is some things that are gonna take up a, a good amount of our time. It's, it's in draft format because again, you know, I, I can help guide some things there, but ultimately it's the board that sets you know, the long-term vision for the agency. And you know, I follow along with that. So. You know, my hope is, as you guys work on something similar for board goals for this year, that the, you know, the items that I've provided to you fit um, and kind of, you know, dovetail in along with your board objectives. And um, yeah, I'm excited once we go through this process to be able to share this with our, our department. I have not shared it with them yet, um, but I think they're anxiously waiting to see where we're going this next year. So. Uh, that was the primary purpose of creating that document and, and then sharing it with you to give you an idea of some of the things uh, that myself and my executive staff would like to accomplish this year. So thank you, Director. Thank you. So um, before we get started, does anyone have any questions about um, the Chief's goals? I mean, just really cursory questions. I mean, we're going to get into some of the discussions in more in depth. That if you have any just preliminary questions, this might be the time. Oh, Virginia. To ask. Yeah, I can. I can't really see y'all, so just kind of shout out to me. Is that you, Rob? Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, using the accreditation. Well, oh, my headset's good. Using the accreditation project that Manny was working on, uh, involving that and we never approved it as an entire board 
but if you look at the nine points and you look at the chief draft for his uh, strategic goals, we can pretty much put a lot of what the chief has written into one through nine. And, you know, that's where I'm coming from relative to uh, this, uh, this goal setting or strategic plan and goal uh, meeting. I think I'll, if you look at one through nine and you look at what the chief has done here, which is, which is chief, great job. Uh, I think we can place those items on, in uh, the strategic plan that was uh, formulated with our accreditation process. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Somewhat uh, similar along the lines of what Rob, Rob just got to mention. Um, it, it, in terms of being able to, I, I, I um, appreciate the and, and value uh, what the chief have has written, and I think um, you know m moving forward as a board, it appears to me that uh, if we're going to just kind of just throw out close to 25 goals here tonight, you know, we're being 18 to 25 goals tonight. It, it really need to be drawn upon some reference point uh, that's, that it, since Rob had mentioned that we did not approve um, the, the nine points, which uh, was part of the attachment A that was sent out, um, which really kind of outlines those, those goals um, uh, that, that, that was talked about. Um, I, I think it's important, going to be important for us to kind of really, to be able to, because underneath those, there are, there are a lot of activities. There's, there's a lot of objectives that, that, that is, that were mentioned. And, it, and the chief also, uh, put about five bullet points on the, each one of his broader goals that, that he outlined. So being able to put those in perspective as to how it fit into our overall T plan will be will be very helpful. Uh, I think in terms of being able to move move forward, uh, because part of what I wrote down and when we get to it is uh, the goals, uh, the three things that I, I looked at that may help us to be able to achieve some some continuity from from. From, from the basic mission all the way up to to day-to-day uh, -day activity and accountability. So I'm hoping that we are able um, to do that, to, if not tonight, but at least begin to think about the process uh, on how we, how we uh, tackle all these, these activities. Okay, any other comments? Okay, so, um, so the structure tonight will be let's, that we'll each present our goals and what what we hope to achieve. Gary has kindly offered to take notes and basically kind of put together a chart so that um, you know our brainstorming session will be captured. And at the February meeting, which is the second phase of our goal setting, will be around just basically approving those after if we have further you know after further discussion if we have other questions to ask. So why don't we just kind of jump into Virginia, um, Virginia, excuse me, this is Chuck. Could you just give me an idea of how long you expect to go this evening? Um, well, hopefully not more than a couple hours. I mean, why? What what were you thinking? I I I had no idea what you were thinking. So that's all I that sounds reasonable to me. Right. So so that's that's kind of where I am tonight, if and that's the structure that I think might be most useful and efficient. So um, I'm not sure. My the whole screen is just like completely messed up right now. So I'm just wondering if you know if anyone wants to start off first. I mean, I could start off um, if you want. Why don't I can let me. Why don't I just start off? And this is these are. Rob just got his hand up, Virginia. Oh, Rob. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just my screen is not. I can't really see everyone. So, do you want to oh, take it away? Sorry, Rob. No, that's yeah, fine. Take, for take it away. 
<laughs> take it. Uh, I don't know where <laughs> to put it. Take it away. Well, I don't know, know where do to you put want it. to start off and talk about your three to five goals? I want to talk about what I just talked about. Uh, uh, the nine strategic goals that Manny had drawn up in the accreditation process, I would like to approve those. And with what the chief has done, take each one of those and put them in a particular category that the chief has identified operationally. Um, so that's my presentation. Thank you. Gary? Yeah, so, so I just want to have a clarifying question to what Rob's after. Rob, when you, when you talk about the nine points, are you referencing the attachment that Michelle had sent out? which was labeled the board 2021 priorities, or are you referencing some other document that I've potentially never seen? Probably, probably the latter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so let me, can let me, so let me just answer that, unless Rob wants to answer this, but there is an accreditation document that Manny finished, or I, I, I don't even know, did he finish, actually finish it, Mark? So, um, finished is, a, I think, a term of art. So we do have available <laughs> on our website and on our intranet uh, the strategic plan that Manny developed with some internal right. stakeholder input. Is it um, really a valid strategic plan? I, I don't know. But I will say the, the, um, the nine items that Director Solano is referring to in the attachment that Michelle sent out do tie into the strategic plan and yeah they're, they're basically nine overarching goals each one of those is listed in there with a bunch of um kind of bullet points uh, to-do list items under each one that's listed so they they do tie together well so the the document that i got that michelle sent out was the 2021 board priorities that's not the accreditation document Mark. no but on the on the left uh hand column of that you can see it that the, the header there says Menlo Park Fire Protection District 2020 to 2025 strategic plan. Wow. Those are the strategic priorities that are in the strategic plan. And then next to them, the board established some priorities that tied in with, with those, not with everyone, but with some. They're from 2021, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Robert? So to continue along that line, so to me it's important to be able to, to I'm glad we find we're talking about the reference point of of the documents and how things tie in because it's it's really I think strategically important because if we if we are uh, the motion that Rob made I assume refer back to that particular document and within that uh, adopting accepting everything that's within that particular plan means accepting uh, the 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 uh, objectives uh, within that as well. So, which is a good document, which really kind of lends itself to kind of breaking everything down, except for, you know, the day-to-day -day work activity to achieve that. Uh, and I think that's that's a good solid, to me, a good solid starting point uh, to, to be able to start from that and then fill in everything else, whether it's board, uh, individual goals or or as well as the chief goal because I went through that document and I went through the chief document and and try to put them into those cat different categories is that, that was there okay I think that we have to be careful that um not to get strategic plan mixed up with goals for 2023 right I mean so if we want to as a board uh, create and develop a strategic plan that could be one of the goals for 2023 where we start something like this I, I i mean i'm looking at i see what you're talking about chief and i did look at this document for um, board priorities for 2021 and um i mean a lot of these things are still somewhat relevant but a lot of the things that in 2021 our board priorities weren't even really done and i think that for our immediate 2023 goals, that should be separate from a strategic planning document that we should be putting together as a board. So that's where I think we should start in the 2023, goal, 2023 goals for this year, which could be in line with what you have just outlined for us, Chief. 
And by the way, my camera, I don't know why it's not working, but if, I don't even know if you can see me, but I'm on camera just in case. Robert. Okay, so I it, it, once again, I think we were repeating ourselves uh, year after year doing the same thing. Every year coming up with, with new goals, uh, new ideas uh, to, to uh, move forward on and which we have already spent, uh, I don't know how much money trying to create uh, a strategic plan uh, uh, over the years and, and all, all from what I understand, and it helped me out for those gurus on strategic planning that you know, you can add to uh, uh, to the plan, um, but one something already exists. So it's about not creating a new plan, but using what's there and and adding. If there are other activities and uh, that need the objectives need to be be achieved, adding to that particular plan uh, through approval by by the board. So I'm not uh, in uh, talking about. Uh, uh, going back and creating a new strategic plan, we have something here, and it's just a matter of you using that. And 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 if there's new goals, uh, activities that the chief got, figuring out where they fit within that plan, and just take off from there. Just just continue on. So I'm through with that. Yep. Rob, Rob, Gary, you had your hand up, but you yep. put it down. I don't know if you wanted to add anything before I call on Rob. Yeah, no, no, I'm just slightly confused being the new guy. Um, so am I, is, Gary. I, I, so I was, I. In, I guess I was under an impression that from some prior comments that were made in other meetings, including the couple before I was elected, that the accreditation process never really completed. We didn't, quote, pass accreditation, as I understood it. Yet, there, it sounds like everything's organized around an accreditation document. So maybe I'm just out of sync on what the actual status of accreditation is and how how these goals are supposed to fit into the accreditation process, or are they just two separate activities altogether? Yep. I'm Virginia? with you. Yeah, yep. Rod? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I agree with Robert. Uh, we have a document that we didn't approve because of some the accreditation, we had a few, and the chief could correct me, that there were a few points that we needed to get done. We put it on a back burner. We're having a management and audit review project that we paid for. And, you know, that's something too that, uh, chief, uh, how, how far along are that? I mean, you know, that would be really helpful for us at, at this uh, juncture. If we had the, you know, that their results and their recommendations, so we could add to this. Uh, so, how far off are they, ch Chief? And then, uh, I, I just to look at the these from the accreditation process. That one in nine, I agree with Robert that we have a foundation here, and Chief. When I reviewed your draft and going over these nine points, I saw where your draft could be fit into all these nine categories. So that's why I'm maybe I'm a little like Gary, a little confused because I know we didn't approve the the nine strategic goals from the accreditation process, but your draft and this accreditation. Uh, plan and goals and objectives that were prepared fits really well to me. So yeah. thank you. So maybe I can add some clarification. Let me give it a, a try. So it's interesting. Um, it's interesting when I uh, applied for the position of fire chief, I found this strategic plan on our website and read the heck out of it. I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, then when I, when I got here, I realized that nobody's actually using this internally for a guidance document for us. And, and here's, here's part of it, you know, as far as the accreditation process goes, we've paused it. With Manny's departure, we've put it on pause. It, it doesn't mean it's out of, um, out of sight, out of mind completely. Chief Coyle and I are actually 
attending a conference on accreditation so we can learn more about the values of it and come back to the board with a recommendation as to whether we should pursue it and how long we believe that would take. As part of Manny's process, and in order for us to go uh, to pass the accreditation process, we're required to have a strategic plan. Um, this, this strategic plan in, in order to pass accreditation has to be fully vetted, has to have stakeholder input from internal stakeholders, external stakeholders and our board and go through a, a really open, transparent process. The plan was not developed using those processes. It was just done with internal stakeholders. It's not a bad document. The board could adopt it if they wanted to, and it would be, it would be a fine starting place. But if we went through the accreditation process, we would have to um, basically go through and it'd be like a, a down to the studs remodel with this in order for us to make it actually pass through accreditation and make it our document that everybody had input onto, into, including the board. So that, right. that so, is- Oh, go oh, on ahead. chief, sorry. Um, so that's it. I, one, one of the things also, you know, as far as the management audit goes, it has been given to me and I've had my executive staff do what they call a technical review of it. So it's not commenting on any of the findings or anything, it's reading through it and determining if there's anything technically inaccurate in the document. That's gonna go back to them at the end of this week. I don't know how long it's gonna to take them to make those corrections. Uh, their plan is AP Triton will be making a presentation to the board of the findings at our March meeting. My hope is, is that we can get the actual management audit in your hands a couple of weeks prior to that. So you guys have some time to digest it. I, I will say, it does make reference, you'll see in the management audit, quite a few times to the presence of a strategic plan, but that nobody's actually using the strategic plan for what it was intended to. And that's probably because we've never come out either as a fire chief or as a board and say, this is our document that we are gonna follow and use to give us a five to 10 year vision of where we're going. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the history lesson of where we are right now. Um, like I said, if, if we adopted those nine items that Director Jones and Solano are asking, that, that wouldn't harm us. It would give us a foundation of saying these things are important to us, and that, that could be fine, too. But um, anyway, well, enough so, of me talking. So when after the whole, we've had this discussion with regard to the accreditation thing and that you thought that maybe we needed to reset that whole situation right because it just it wasn't really complete and and I think there was there the accreditation document actually opened up more to more the was opening up to more questions than answers as well um and I agree with you that the strategic plan situation has to be based on what you said last time I, I think it was a few months ago that you said this has to be a more transparent and public process which by the way we did do back in I want to say 2012 so about 10 to 11 years ago and so um this is why I'm just thinking that if we deal with our specific goals and maybe we can use the nine items not i wouldn't call it a strategic plan for based on the accreditation um, requirements but as a guideline for what how we want to see things through that's fine and but i do think that each of us as a board an elected board member should be able to contribute his or her um ideas it's suggested in the um email that gary said and actually this was something that gary the chief and i talked about yesterday as well so I mean, we can have that as a guideline, but I, I do think that we need to, you know, come up with with um, our goals specifically for 2023. Gary, you had your hand up. Yeah, no, I, I think between you and the chief, you've addressed a lot of it. I think, yeah, my, my concern would be us taking a process where we align everything to what sounds like an accreditation process that was kind of put on ice and set aside um, never formally adopted, never formally approved, yet we're going to use that as the foundation to set the goals. It would seem to me if the chief and Chief Coyle are going to go off, revisit, you know, kind of where does accreditation fit in with our overall district strategy and how 
how the chief wants to manage the district and every you know and his employees i think we should let them go do that and then you know revisit how the objectives of that process fits into both the creation of a long-term strategic plan um, as well as you know kind of the you know are there objectives that need to then be embraced or adopted to support that process but yeah, you know, it sounds like it's kind of half baked, not quite done, not ready for prime time. It just seems like to me it would be a little bit of an error to align everything we're doing to something that's in kind of a state of fluctuation. That would be my only concern. Yeah, I agree with you, Rob. You're on mute, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Gary, can can you give us an example? Uh, do, first, do you have the nine the nine uh, points that the accreditation process identified? I I have the nine points that are in Michelle's attachment that the chief said were from the accreditation document. I don't have the accreditation document in front of me. No, but you have the nine items. Are yeah, there it's a any? Left hand, it's a left hand column of what Michelle okay. sent out. Is what I'm All right. Thank you. Are there any items? that the chief identified in his draft that could not fit in the one in nine strategic goals or objectives that have already been written? No, I, I think- Can I think, you see any? No, no, no I don't. You know, I mean, that's- part, I, I, yeah, I didn't fully analyze it. I don't see anything that says we can't draw lines and connections between what the chief had and what that list is. I'm not, I'm not disputing that at all, that you could, you could draw those okay. lines. Okay. Um, I think my question is, you know, given that, that that's connecting the dots of something that was in motion and never completed, is, is that necessarily equivalent to a, our highest priority goals that we should have for the current year? And, and in fact, it raises the question of should accreditation and, and chasing, you know, coming to a decision on an accreditation process be one of the strategic goals? not necessarily embracing something that was never really, you know, kind of finished or, or saw prime time. That's all, that's kind of, you know, so you're right. I mean, you can, you can interconnect all these things. I don't question that at all. Virginia, may I continue? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, the way I understood it, Gary, and uh, if we're looking at either cognitive or effective either we're gonna call them goals or objectives, okay? Uh, the thing I don't understand um, is that, which is what Robert uh, has said too, and I don't wanna put words in your mouth, Robert, please correct me, uh, that these nine are actually a baseline for us to work from. And of course, what the chief has given us as a draft, uh, additional information to go under all these areas. Now, I mean, as an overall one to five year plan, are you talking about, let's say building like, like station one and making it into a training facility, Gary, so I can understand, uh, is that what, like, those mechanics relative to a one to five year plan to build that training facility or uh, gosh, are there any other cognitive things like uh, other like technical devices that maybe we should be buying or identified uh, things like that, that, that would be, are those what you're talking about those specific things that we should get like buying a helicopter or something. <laughs> I mean, I'd recommend against help that, me. Yeah, <laughs> help me with what what your your. Yeah, no, yeah. I. Yeah, you know, thank but, you, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Robert. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to be argumentative about what's there at all because I you know I think that's all valid stuff. I think the chief's goals are all valid. What you know. And, and, and the way we've we've done it in the corporate world for years is you you have the business plan and you have the executive team's plan of how they're going to operate the business. And in this case, it'd be the chief's plan of this is how I'm going to operate the business. 
these are the priorities that I'm setting up with my my staff of of chiefs basically in the in the fire district. I'm going to share it with my employees. I'm going to align my organization behind that. And those are all that's all great. And I'm I'm thrilled to see that Mark's off doing that and working on that. Um, yeah, I suspect all of us would have some input or you know moving things around a little bit in that document. We just saw it, and we should probably at some point give them, give Mark feedback either in a setting like this or individually. Um, but then beyond that, then there's we have a board of directors, and it's like when when we look out and we say twelve months from now, when we come to the end of twenty twenty three, we look back and say, was there a handful of things that we just wanted to get done this year that we thought were as important to the fire district above and beyond the the table stakes of you know, good fiscal management, good oversight, all of our policy setting, you know, we don't have operational duties, we have policy setting duties. So up above those, is there a handful of things that we would like to see accomplished as a district that we think would move the agenda forward for the community that we represent? And that's what these board goals, in my mind, were supposed to be. Robert, thanks, Gary. Robert, you had your hand raised. Yes, I did. Um, I think all of what Gary uh, have said, it, it, it just makes sense. We are, we have, um, since I've been on board, you know, we have looked at back in 2000, January 8, 2019, uh, when CityGate came before us uh, and was working with the board to try to create a strategic plan and that got derailed before the end of the year. And uh, 2020, another effort started as well and that effort got derailed. And in 2021, we started this process and talked about it and it got derailed. So what, what I am saying, and I agree wholeheartedly with Gary, we just can't, something is there that haven't been approved yet by the board even though Rob talked about, and I agree with it, we need, we should just go ahead and prove it. It just makes sense because the process has not been completed by the um, uh, the this the this other plan that was drawn from the original document uh, that took place in two thousand uh, January eight two thousand nineteen uh, when Manny was pulling his information together and trying to create a plan that those doc that document and other documents was referenced from. So part of what I'm hoping that we that one of the things we do this year is to to uh, even though we have this document up on our website that said it's a strategic plan that that somehow we get to the end of it, we finish that process, we finish that plan, we can call it 2023 to 2028. I don't it doesn't really matter. That as long as we have a reference, a document, a strategic plan up and running so that we could draw from that every year to create whatever goals we want to try to achieve um, uh, uh, as an institution um, uh, for that year. And this year is going to be like any other year. Uh, we just throw out some goals and we'll hopefully we can prioritize them and then see what we can accomplish by, by December. So, Robert, can I just chime in here? Because I just suggested that the thanks that the the document that was sent to the board and that was part of the agenda with the nine um, points would be a guideline for what we do today to figure out what we want to task the chief to do and work on with our professional staff. I also view this document or our goals today would is something that we can use to evaluate the chief on when we have to do is you know annual evaluation as well mark i mean I, i'm hoping that 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 kind of helps you as well right to give you some structure on on benchmarkable benchmarkable um goals to achieve so if we can all agree that the nine priorities would be a guy or the nine um points from the board 2021 priorities, not necessarily the priorities, but these nine points could be a guideline. And then we put in there instead of board 2021 priorities, put board 2023 goals. I mean, I would like to see that happen. Gary? 
Yes, I just wanted to get clarification from Robert on one thing that he, because it might take away a little bit. I, do, I agree with what you just said, by the way, Virginia, and I, and I don't see a real downside in that. But what I heard Robert saying is essentially that one of the goals are, that he has for the year is that we need to agree to a plan, a strategic plan, an accreditation plan, a set of priority plans, but we need to have an agreement to something. Is am I interpreting your comment correctly there, Robert? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because year after year we keep going through this motion, but we never we set set again, we set goals like we are doing getting ready to do right now that's operating. Uh, I don't know what reference point they are coming from. You know, I don't know what what, what plan, long-term plan they are other than that if we see a need as a board. I think the chief is taking care of all the operational insights and in, 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 in hindsight, so whichever site you want to look at, to kind of understand what he needs in the operation need. But as a board, how do we how do we fit into that based upon based upon what? Well, what are we referenced to? And that's that's the where I'm lost. We don't have no reference point um, to draw from to say that we're moving. We're moving forward. Uh, and uh, if we're not moving forward, then what's the problem? And let's fix it to move forward. But every year we keep coming up with these new goals to do certain things. So, but yes, uh, make a long story short, Gary. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chuck, did you have anything to add? I mean, you haven't really said anything. You're probably just taking it all in as well. <clears throat> well, I just have two comments. One is, um, I, I didn't see the nine points. Um, and I was just going through my my email, just trying to see when I was sent that and so forth. So I, I, I don't have that at hand. I certainly haven't looked at it, but um, I'm aware of the genesis of it. And this was something that Manny basically authored over a six month or one year time period. It never had any review whatsoever. And I'm not prepared to say, oh, I agree with these nine points or I disagree with these nine points. I mean, they haven't seen the light of day as far as I'm concerned. And um, so I think we should keep, uh, adhere to the agenda that you set up where each each director talks about the goals they have and let's see where we are when we get done. Okay, I'm fine with that too. Why don't we, why don't we just start? Chuck do you, uh, or Gary, do you want to start with your goals? I mean, I can start with mine too. No, I was going to, I'm happy to, I should probably go last because I'm going to try okay, to okay. Recording, recording these as we go. Um, and and the, the goal here is I'll be able to, as we get a little further, I'll be able to just share the screen and you'll see that I'm just recording what you're saying, trying to capture it at least, but that'll give everybody a chance to kind of say, no, 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 that's not what I meant. Okay. I mean, Robert, do you want to start? You don't, <laughs> you're on mute, Robert. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, I'll get started. Um, there's um, so one of the goals that as for the board is that the board of directors list and prioritize its uh, goals for uh, next year uh, from unfinished business uh, as well as existing goals that, that that's outstanding. Uh, and Gary, what I'll do is I'll type this up and send it to you so you can have a, a email it to you so you can have my language and you can okay. change it as you go. The second uh, uh, area is that the board of directors adopt a uh, policy to um, to hold quarterly um, progress review uh, in April, August, and December. Um, uh, goal number three is that the board of directors uh, to update. Um, well, I can't even read my own writing now. Update annually a strategic plan for the next year um and that's it i just said the three chuck so so virginia just can i ask one oh. clarifying question sure. if you don't mind of robert when when you say a, a policy to hold quarterly progress reviews policy reviews of progress reviews of what Progress re reviews of our uh, goals that of goals. Are, okay, got yes. it. Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't yeah. assuming something. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, Chuck. Um, you want me to present the ones I have? Yeah, please. 
Okay. Um, my first uh, goal that I'd like to see is I'd like to see us look at and enhance the board's ability to do its its job. Um, one of the things that I've been uh, disappointed in is that it's very hard to get information. Um, and um, I, 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 I I feel in many cases we had bad information, sometimes even lies, and uh, it's very difficult to do the job we're elected to do without good information. Um, <laughs> that has taken the form of, um, I, I think the board should have a couple of reports, direct reports to the board. One is an internal auditor. Um, our, the fire district does not have the normal checks and balances that say a city government would have where you typically would have the finance department is not the same as the operations group. In the fire district, operations that is suppression just sort of dominates everything. And all these other things that normally are checks and balances are kind of uh, uh, secondary and, and without much um, power and, and so forth. And um, so I'd like to see the, uh, uh, us have an internal auditor that reported to the board so that we could check the numbers that were given. Um, I think the clerk should report to the board. Um, in some cases, the clerk, I think, knowingly gave us bad info. I'm talking history, by the way. I'm not talking about in recent months or anything like that. And all of this exists before current chief was here and all occurred before uh even michelle was was uh the the board clerk so I'm, I'm talking about old history i'm not complaining about anything today but i feel like we don't have the right tools i also think that the board should have the ability to advise the chief on some key appointments that could be the deputy and HR and finance, or in now with you know administrative services or whatever, not to not to not to um, uh, need to vote on it or agree to it, but at least meet the person and give their thoughts to the chief prior to hiring. And the reason I say that is right now we have this sort of H bomb approach. If it doesn't work out, we could fire the chief, but that's all we can do. And I think it would be helpful. I think the board represents a lot of different kinds of experience and backgrounds. And we get chiefs who don't have some of that expertise. And I think it wouldn't hurt the chief to at least hear, to be on a panel. Um, and I just don't think that fire suppression alone is the only way to screen an HR person, for example. So that, that's, that's, that's my first one is that the um, board get the tools it needs to do its job. Uh, the second goal is I would like a district-wide alerting system, aud audible alerting system installed. Um, I think we were very lucky in the last, last um, in the floods and so forth that we just had that, that we didn't lose power, but many communities did and, and we, we would have been lost without internet and cell phones and things like that. Um, but I, 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 we've talked about the alerting system. One of the problems before is when we looked at it is we didn't have any ex expertise in house that knew how to set up a protocol for this and what kind of messages would be sent out and who would be responsible and so forth. I, I, I would guess that we still don't have that expertise, but we certainly could hire the expertise to do that. We bought a sample we bought a demonstration alerting system. The idea was this was a plan presented to the board. We were going to test it uh, all over the district and find out what, what kind of range it had and how many of these units we would need to have an effective alerting system. But as far as I know, it never was tested one time. No protocols were ever conceived and so forth. Um, the third priority that I have is um, I'm, I, I think the board needs to take a hard look at the county's uh, efforts to create a countywide fire department. 
I mean, that that is the direction things are going in. And I think I, I, I don't think it serves our residents well as somebody who lives on the southern border of you know Menlo Park. Uh, it certainly doesn't help our area where the, the county's fire chiefs decide that we can't make a deal with Palo Alto for mutual aid. Um, because the, the point is, all of our all of our resources go north. And some of them can come south, but there's none from the south of us that would come up to help us. So I think the county has failed miserably in terms of what it's done with regard to the ambulance service. I think it's failed with its dispatch system, buying the wrong system. Um, I just think everything the county is doing is is a problem and we're trying to be nice guys and get along with the county and so forth but it's not serving our residents well so i'd like to at a policy level i'd like to basically um firm up our position and and make it clear to the county that we don't want to cooperate with with the kinds of things that we don't think are helping um I, uh, an, another goal I have is I would like to see us have a facilities manager who could do long range facilities planning. I saw on the chief's goals, for example, that we're talking about station one. Um, but I don't think that's our first priority. I mean, the last time we got good uh, once time reports showed that we had other other stations that weren't meeting their response times. Three out of the seven weren't meeting their response times. To me, those stations have a higher priority than station one. And I think we also need to separate the discussion of se station one from the discussion of a headquarters and some of those kinds of things. So we, we've got property that's contiguous, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to all do it as part of and call it station one. And in fact, I think it probably makes sense to have some separation between the station and the administrative offices. Um, I think we I think we need to take a hard look at fleet management, not because it's a problem, but because we spend so much money in it. Um, we, we really need a fleet management program with you know the the mileages, the the, the when we trade in the equipment. Um, we've we've moved now toward a very positive thing, which is purchasing uh, all our equipment at one time, which allows us to make it uniform and to have a single um, type of supply or, or material that we, we keep in stock and inventory and so forth. So I think we're moving in the right direction, but we need a civilian professional to, to manage that. And then lastly, I, my goal is that we have a very strong um, uh, cert or uh, uh, volunteer effort uh, in, in the district, and that the the district supports it financially, but with not not manages it and you know lords over it like has happened in the past. But we actually support it and allow the volunteers to create a vibrant, effective uh, force. So those those are the things that I'm looking for. Thank you, Chuck. Rob? Can you can you see my screen, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, but, but it's very. I'm not complaining, Gary, but it's very small. I, I I don't know if we can do anything about that. You try to make it bigger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's about. Yeah, the that's a little better. That's better. That is better. <laughs> if you go to the top of your screen, where it says you are viewing Gary Bloom's screen in green. To the right where it says view options if you click the arrow down you'll have a bunch of options and each of you can individually change the size without gary having to change it for everybody oh look at that thank you very much thanks okay. steve i didn't even All know part of the legal services that hanson bridges provides <laughs> to the fire there you go there you go yeah that makes a huge difference thank you i'm glad you came by today steve <laughs> I, I put it i put it on 100 percent, and it made all the difference there you go yeah, I was just depending on my progressive lenses to take care of that problem. So far. All right. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Okay, okay, Virginia. Thank you, Rob. I mean, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, Rob. Okay. Uh, first, Gary, um, uh, you just spell my last name with an I, not an O. I'm not the county, 
Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, the first, the first thing would be, uh, I would definitely like the fire district to make sure that all employees are evaluated. Annually, I assume. Of course. Yes. Thank you. Um, if, if I have more than five, Virginia, is it okay? Yes. Okay. So how right. many more are you talking about? 10? Oh, I just have, I just have one, six? one more. To six. Okay, that's, that's fine. All. Not 20, yeah. Rob. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gosh, no, no. Six, that's no. perfect. Thanks. All right. Uh, next would be, uh, be sure that exit interviews are, are prepared uh, by uh, employees uh, leaving the district and have some, I don't know if we can do this legally or not, but have some type of a review uh, by the board to make it more or less a learning process for that. I don't know. Can we do that, Chief? Uh, I'll I'll check in with Steve Miller later and get back to you. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, next is a, establish a true fund for career development for all employees. And I think Chuck touched on this one: a semi-annual review of response times for all stations. Next, semi a semi-annual review for mutual aid requests and reports. Basically, what was our support commitment and theirs? So what I'm trying to get here is, I know we have this mutual aid and we have this dispatch system where some of us are not too happy with uh, how many times are we outside of the district? How many times do we support other agencies? Like when Redwood City uh, browns out a fire station, you know, how does that affect our uh, uh, service model? Uh, next, all freedom of information requests review and published on a quarterly basis. And the last one that we try to strive for is hold joint meetings yearly with all stakeholders. That would be Atherton, East Palo Alto, Menlo Park, and San Mateo County. Thank you. That's it, Virginia. Thank you, Rob. Gary, I don't know if you want to go, if you want me to go, either one. Completely up to you. If you want me to go, I'm happy to. Okay. So I cheated. I put mine in already. Oh, you um, did? Okay. Well, then why don't you, so, why don't you but, go then? Yeah, but so so let me just walk through them. Because um, some of them actually, it's interesting listening to the others. They start encompassing some of these and have you know, some similar themes. Um, one for me was just a, a district-wide disaster response plan encompassing the roles of, you know, where does fire EMS fit in? Where do our special operations units fit in? And where do community volunteers fit in? And you know, one of my observations on, on it is when we think about community readiness and get it and so forth, we tend to look at it as an offshoot of the district's response plans. And the reality is it's you know, the way I think about it is more of a tiering of resources that you bring in. And you start with your fire and EMS response, your, your on-duty services, you have your special operations units and other organizations, and then you have your community volunteers that could be essentially quote called up or requested to assist as well, um, depending on the magnitude of something. So it's more of a, 
it, the, the real focus here for me was the community volunteers, but it was integrating them with our overall disaster plan, not a standalone thing that just exists as, as community and enablement. Um, I, I, I do believe that we need, we need to kickstart the design and build the new station one and the related facilities. Um, and, and the reason I believe that is if you look at the measure V that went on, had that passed, that would have been, you know, for, from my lens, at least a real limiting effect on our ability to proceed with it. We kind of have a, an open window here under which we can proceed with existing zoning, existing processes, and it's our most dated station, and it's the one that's probably plays the most central role as far as, you know, for, for training purposes, where we have the, you know, a larger staff associated with it, just down the street from the administrative offices. And by related facilities, for me, the related facilities was kind of you know, training facilities, which would include room, but also per perhaps a training tower of some kind, um, just meeting meeting rooms, meeting facilities, um, you, know, per, you know, potentially equipment storage or resource storage for, you know, the medical supplies, other things that are now kind of spread out all over in different stations, you know, different stations having different caches of equipment. So ability to do some of that. Um, my, my third one, is the one that really I think fits in with a lot of what was said already, which is measure and evaluate district effectiveness. Um, I'm kind of a data and analytics guy. I like data, and it doesn't seem like we have a lot of data on the responsive, you know, responsive our response time effectiveness, and that's for both fire and EMS in both. So that kind of touches on some of what I think Chuck and Rob were both talking about. You know, is yeah, having having a report and having something that we can actually look at to say how effective are we, and and when I hear things and comments from other directors about whether the county's effective or not effective, um, it's it's interesting. I have my own views on it, but I don't have any data to point me to yes, that's correct or no, that's incorrect. Um, so data analytics around response to effectiveness might might take on it is after action reports for key events, COVID, the 1231-22 floods, um, after action resorts play a role in measuring district effectiveness, and they become a guideline for you know, how we should operate differently going forward. And, and I think measuring district effectiveness, we represent a community, um, should have some community input into the process as well um, to gauge from our community members whether they believe you know, we, we've been effective or not and, and what, what things we could do to be more effective in servicing them. And then my, my last one was just launching the, the five to 10 year strategic plan process to help you know, kind of define the future of the district, define the futures of the special services that we provide, you know, whether that's the water rescue team, the task force, the strike teams, the, you know, the, SWAT paramedics that we offer up, but whatever the case may be, we have a lot of special units. Um, and I think, you know, my, my take on it is we we operate a lot of these special units as kind of separate resources from the district versus looking at as an integrated set in our strategic plan. Um, yeah, we, you know, we bring a lot of benefit to the task force as an example. The task force brings tremendous benefit to the district, and we should just integrate the strategic plans for those you know, those areas together and look at it as, as a as a unit, not as separate entities. Um, and and again, I'm I'm saying this one not being completely familiar with work that's been done in the past or accreditation documents or whatever else that might already exist, um, but just the need for you know kind of a really solid five to 10 year plan looking on the future. So those were mine. Thank you, Gary. Okay, so it's it's my turn. So um, I have about five goals as well. And but I just want to preface by saying that underlying my goals, as usual, you know, the number one responsibility for I think any elected board is to be fiscally responsible and make sure that we have a healthy budget uh, and use the public's money wisely. 
And um, also having, because we've been looking at this for years, pretty much since I've been on the board, that our fire district's performance is data driven. I think everyone's kind of touched on that a little bit and I, and I agree. Uh, my goals are probably, you know, a little simpler, but they also overlap with some of the goals um, that were mentioned today. But I'll, I'll tell you, um, the first one is probably going to be just pretty simple. It seems simple, but it's not because it hasn't been done in the last couple of years. And that is um, produce an annual report. I think the last time um, that an annual report was produced was in 2020. And I view the, the annual report as a report to the community. Um, and a lot of things have happened since 2020. It's so many changes have happened in the fire district, including getting a new chief and it just the administration has changed. And, and um, I think that we'll have some possible um, just new information about like the, the floods that the, the storms that have happened and that may you know take a little more time but I think all of this information captures what has happened over the last two years so that if someone went back and looked at like a history a history of this they can see like a trend or you know can we can we look is this some is the same thing happening again you know over a period of time and, and I look at this from the CZU lightning fire perspective um, on the south coast back in 2020 because I had talked to some of the constituents there and actually um, how fire as well and they were like oh yeah you know this lot burned and you know the last time Duarts burned you know like just going back into this historical context right and so I think kind of looking back at the history um, is helpful for creating the future and I know it sounds kind of cliche-ish but I do think that we need to also to capture the history and like these storms you know what what happened here and so that down the road we can have a comparison but th that's just me that I like looking at a historical context so that we can understand what the future might look like as well and plan which leads to another part of the goal first goal which is to create a strategic plan or develop a strategic plan strategic plan using this comprehensive process that the chief spoke about. Um, we did something like this in 2012. And, you know, maybe we can learn from that and, and make the process a little better. But I think we had a lot of the different stakeholders like labor, staff, um, the various committees that the, the board members were on. And I think we even had um, community, like the, the CERT folks there as well, or at least board members who represented the CERT teams. So th that would be my first goal. Um, the second goal is kind of similar to what um, Gary was saying with regard to station one. And I have actually focusing on the training tower specifically for our fire district. I mean, we've been talking about this for years. And, and so I would like us to at least, you know, in this one year 2023 you know look at how we can fund the first step whether it's the design phase the, I, I don't I don't even know and and so maybe that kind of ties into a longer term thing with you know getting a facilities manager that Chuck mentioned but I, I really think that you know we do have some good staff who can help with that like John Hitchcock, I mean, I think who's has a knowledge and history of what has happened in the fire district. But I do think that we have to do something. I think with the acquisition of St. Patrick's Seminary property, I, if I remember correctly, Mark, and you might want to look into this and maybe talk to Harold about it, there was an expectation that we were going to use that for that property for various things. But I think one of the main things was for, um, a training site I don't know you might want to double check that um the third goal I have is for the USAR team I mean Gary you kind of you kind of touched on it maybe to a certain you know, in your the special operations piece so and you clearly know more about this than I do considering you were the program manager at one point for USAR but I think that we need to make sure that we that our use our team remains relevant and deployable even within our own county i think back to the san bruno gas pipeline explosion and how we were able to deploy the resources from um, our task force to to the service of that incident 
So we'll need to, and I also think that given where we are with our property situation there with PG&E, um, Mark, I, you know, I, I know that PG&E has contacted you. We'll probably need to work with them to discuss what that site is going to look like and what might be available for us to use and, and what we did, what won't be able to use it for. And maybe look at um, some other place for, you know, the remainder of of the uses for the site that based on what we can't use in the current site. So I, I don't know, I mean, pg and &E, I know has reached out to you. And so if you can just keep us in the loop as things develop there, um, that would be great. But I do think that our our uh, use, our, our FEMA task force should be, you know, relevant and deployable, which I'm assuming also means like all the training and whatever we need. I think that, that our communities um, rely on us in San Mateo County, but also in the state of California and in the United States. And I think it, it's just such a great resource um, for, well, for obviously for citizens and residents, but also for our firefighters and you just kind of with this continued training, right? So I, I think there's a benefit for everyone. Um, community preparedness is um, the fourth one, and as this department is reorganized, I, I think um, we're you know we're looking at some interesting things, neat things, and exciting things. And I think that having some input from our very valuable um, community stakeholders uh, would be good. I mean, obviously, I think that we need to be the um, operations part of this, you know, within keep that within the district mark, but certainly we need to have a better communication and better um, engagement with our community stakeholders. I, I mean, I know that, like, for example, ADAPT and MPC Ready and um, Repact, I mean, they're all very involved. And I think that after these storms, and especially from the emails and the, and the pictures that Chuck sent to us and we received emails from members of the public from Chuck's neighborhood. I, I think that people are ready and I think that the fire district has a very important role to play uh, in terms of you know helping them get ready so that they don't have to rely on our professionals at, at a very uh, critical time you know when they need to help themselves. Um, the final item and I think this is important. It's been a long time in coming is looking at how we can support the mental health efforts here. This is something that I talked to Chief Chaplain about when I first got on the board. I mean, just from even starting from like with the chaplain program um, as a survivor of gun violence myself. And, and, you know, I just know that all of these mental health um, issues kind of can creep up on you. And um, Battalion Chief Tom Calvert, I know, is, is absolutely passionate about this issue and has been working on it for years and um, I think has gained a little bit of traction, but in, in an informal way. Uh, I know that Chief Lorenzen has also allocated some funds for this for the firefighters. So it's something that I hope that the HR committee can work on with, the, with Chief Lorenzen and Chief Calvert to possibly put the program, even if it's a pilot program together, whether it's just for our agency or in collaboration and partnership with, you know, appropriate um, partnering agencies. And I, I don't even know how that would look, but I do think that is something that um, the HR committee can look at. And that also ties in with, you know, DEI and Chuck started you know, suggested that that be an ad hoc committee, and and Robert has really taken a, has taken such great care to to keep it um, to find a lot of the information, and so now I think that we can use that information and develop it. So those are the two things from an HR perspective that I think we can work on and and kind of be an example for the rest of the organization and probably even the wider um, community. So uh, I'm hoping that we, the board will allow the HR committee to um, work with staff and the chief on this issue. But those are basically, Gary, I didn't have seven, I had five. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> well, you said you said seven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe, so maybe anyway, were... those... 
the, maybe those they're are, merged or something but yeah i mean some of them are merged and that's okay but thank you for keeping track of my um points uh, gary could i just make one edit that I, I just don't want to forget about please on on my thing of course thank you um i just want to make it clear that i'm not asking people to consider consolidation i i i want us to be wary of of consolidation efforts or uh review county i i don't know how to say it better that but just yeah to review uh, yeah county's efforts uh, thank you yeah chuck thank you for that clarification because i heard it the other way but knowing what you meant based on previous statements i'm glad i'm, I'm glad you clarified all okay. of that well thank you yeah I, I probably said it inarticulately yeah i'm, I'm glad you clarified because i heard it the other direction which is we should go off and consider a county-wide fire agency yeah no i i was trying to say that's what the county is moving toward and uh i'd like us to uh to be aware of it and to see what we want to do about it Okay. Chief, you had your um your one page or your well, I think about one page, at least that's what I saw. Do you want to add on to any of this based on what we just said or get you know talked about? No, I, I no, I appreciate the really constructive conversation that you you all are having. So no, I don't want to you know interject any of my inputs into there. You know, as I look at what you're you know, the items that are there, there's there's a lot there. I don't know how you're going to distill them down into if they're all going to be the goals. But um, yeah, no, none of the things that have been talked about, um, you know, will be, you know, contradicting some of the, you know, the, the items that I presented to you. So that's good. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I have, once you guys um, have determined if you're going to distill them down, I, you know, I may have some questions for board members so I can ensure, you know, I meet the intent of what's being proposed, but I don't have any, any specific interjects. We've laid out what we want and it's seven, almost 715. Do we want to, um, flush out and combine some of these things is right now these are this was just the brainstorming thing and maybe gary what you could do is take it take everything back and synthesize the information and at our february board meeting which is coming up in a few weeks we'll look at that synthesized document and we can actually like um, give more input or just say yes these are the things that we want the chief to do for 2023 I mean, yeah, how do so, y'all want to proceed? So, so if if, if this was a, a live session with a whiteboard and these are all up on a whiteboard, I would be it, taking yeah. different color pens or and markers, and I'd basically be circling, you know, in red all the ones that are related to each other, and then circle in yellow the set that are related to each other there, and you start basically pulling them back together because there's a tremendous amount of overlap in all of these objectives. Um, yeah, certainly, you know, community engagement is, is one of them that showed up a, a number of times. Um, strategic planning showed up a number of times. Facilities showed up a number of times. Um, it's a little hard to do in this environment or in this format, um, given we don't have a kind of an electronic whiteboard to really do it off of. Um, so I think there's, you know, kind of a, a couple choices, which is, is one is circle back to the board members and have each of them go through and say, okay, of, of all the things I heard, here's my, you know, kind of top priority ones of everything I've heard. There's some that were introduced that I hadn't considered. Um, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is for me to take these offline and categorize them essentially. And so take all the ones that are related to the same thing and, and try to put them together into a goal that encompasses the opinion of, you know, something that three or four directors may have mentioned. Um, and I'm I'm happy to go offline and go do that work and then bring it back at the next board meeting. Um, but I'm also happy to kind of hear if as a result of all this, people in the in the if the group has you know some some aspect of prioritization or things they've heard that they think are really important. 
what does the board want to do? Virginia? Robert? Yeah, yeah Robert? I, I think that, I think uh, in terms of what Gary had just mentioned, I think in terms of categorizing, and, and there are some common themes that's running through all of them. Uh, and I think if we can figure out a way to kind of uh, understand what those categories are and then start placing those um, uh, those items, because there's 31 of them uh, into those different uh, themes, then I think it would be, it, it kind of give us an idea of the kind of areas that we really want to, and then uh, then kind of look at uh, each one of those themes, and then try to figure out if we can prioritize in, in those categories, in those particular themes, uh, and then just start with the the number one pick, you know, and um, at that point in time. But it may be hard. How do you do that electronically? I don't know. We're with Zoom right now. I don't yeah. know. But at least we can start with with uh, looking what the, the major things are. Uh, I mean, Gary and I can work on this offline and bring it back to the board too, if that works. Whichever way it works, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't, um, yeah, Gary's right. We don't have a whiteboard. Normally this would be the whiteboard. Time. Yeah, you, yeah, you'd use a whiteboard <laughs> or you use, yeah, the times I've done it in the, in the past, we used just yellow stickies basically with yeah. all the different objectives. And then you pick them up and you move them into clumps and, there's natural clumping here. I mean, if if I go through like Rob's as an example about, you know, review of response times for all stations, review of mutual aid requests, yeah, you know, and then I switch over to mine and and I look at, okay, well, I'm talking about, you know, kind of data-driven evaluation of district effectiveness. Those are all one in the same. You know, Rob was more specific about specific things he wanted to report on, and I was more general in the categorization of it. Um, but that would, yeah. So Robert, to your point, there's really not 31 or 21 or whatever number you counted up. Yeah, you know, there, there's there there is still probably 12 things here or 13 things, I suspect, but there'll be outliers of the ones that don't fit into any of the categorization categorizations that we have to decide whether any of those, you know, kind of over overpower anything that's been categorized potentially as a as a singular line item. And Chuck, I know your hands up. Chuck? <clears throat> well, I'm agreeing with um, what was just said about combining, but, but I think it would be helpful and also just good process if, for example, Gary, you, you, you maybe created a new wording, but then underneath that, put, put the things that individual directors suggested so Agreed. people could see where their thing fit. So yeah. we don't we don't lose the identity of of some of that stuff yet. Yeah, that's exactly how I was thinking about doing it, which is I would create the category or the what I would characterize as the best job I can do to summarize the topic that encompasses the bulk of what was said. And then I'd show by director the director's comments and just cut and paste and move them around. I just don't think I can do that live in this session while oh, we're all yeah. sitting here. I yeah. agree. Th Gary, I can you. work with you on that too. Okay. Thank is you. everyone okay with that process then? And then we'll bring it back to the board at our February board meeting. That'll be the second phase of this whole process. And then we can hopefully adopt the um, priorities for 2023. Sounds good. Now, now one clarification I wouldn't mind getting from S Stephen, which is just... Are, are we allowed with, within the Brown Act to, once, once Virginia and I go off and summarize this and reorganize it, can that be communicated in advance of that meeting to the board members or do we have to wait for the public for the public meeting to communicate that? Thank you for asking the question. I've been thinking about that. The answer to your question is no. You, the two of you who are not on a committee together and are not a quorum of the board, can talk offline, but the documents that you create should be brought back to the board at a public meeting, the not full discussed board. offline. Okay, can it be distributed prior to the meeting? Or it can be distributed as part of as part of the packet, but okay. it shouldn't be distributed in a manner that like elicits responses. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. Okay. And it yeah. Thank you for that, Clifford. Because I I really think it's a matter of. You know, Virginia and I can go off and the two of us, to your point, we can agree on, you know, this, this is what we heard from everybody. 
but I want I want everybody to have an opportunity to see the the work product from that to, from Virginia and I's effort on that before we get into a discussion at it on the meeting. Yeah, you know, we can save the discussion of it for the meeting, um, but it'll be I don't think it'll be very effective if the first view of it everybody has is at the meeting. Well, so wait, hold on. Gary. So what Steve is saying is that the work product we create will go into the board packet. Exactly. Yes. Right. But so that's going to be a public document. So yep. everyone will have access to that. And then yep. at the meeting, we'll discuss the public document. Is that correct, Steve? That's precisely what I'm suggesting. If that meets no, I think your that's, that's desires right. and needs. Uh, well, I mean, I think our choices are very limited. I mean, we're gonna, we should be discussing this anyway in public, and um, I, I mean, I think that that's the, that's the only way we can really go without violating the Brown Act, and I think it's the most transparent way anyway. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not in any way trying to avoid the public discussion. Oh I, yeah, no, I know I, you're just asking. I agree with you that it question. needs to be discussed in public. I'm I'm just trying to make sure I, that we have a reasonable process that the board members when we discuss it have had access to it and the community will have had access to it at the same time if it's in the board packet so it will it will be publicly available at that point in time which is fine okay is everyone just, okay with that process it sounds like you are but i just want to have one more confirmation rob chuck robert well let me let me just add i yes i i am and i think that um um, I think we're doing what we should be doing, which there was some lack of clarity of, were we talking about strategic things? Were we talking about this year and so forth? And I think the reality is that we're talking about both. So that when we talk about community preparedness, that's a that could be expressed as a strategic goal. We want to enhance community preparedness, for example. But what we do this year, where we make a start, is kind of a, an activity for this year. So we're able to to deal at both levels and I think that's appropriate. Okay. And, and Virginia, do you mind if I ask a few questions that might just help us clarify? No, absolutely not. Ask okay. away. We, we have a little bit of time here without running yes. too late. Um, I, I guess one of the questions I have is when we talk about this community volunteers and community preparedness is do the other directors see that as part of our overall response plan as a you know for disasters as a district or do they see it as a separate effort in other words was my characterization of that in line with directors thinking virginia robert i think it's in line i, th I think it's somewhere along the line we need to kind of define we need to figure out what the what the game plan is as a as a district and as a board, because if there is policy decisions that need to be be made, or that we need to kind of figure out what they are, um, because there are some specifics that have came cropped up over the years uh, in terms of policy, but we never have acted on it uh, in creating those policies to kind of help marshal along the the effort in that area. So yeah, uh, I think it's important for us to kind of. Uh, keep that at the top of the top of our, our agenda because it is part of the things that I have read over over in the, in the past in terms of what are what are our priorities as uh, what the district priority is and, and and community preparedness was at the top of that list. Does that help, Gary? Yeah, yeah. Any other directors have comment on that one? Well, Gary, I was just going to say I. I, I I think we're we're often talking about two different things when we talk about community preparedness. We're talking about the first, you know, two hours after there's some sort of a disaster where people are on their own and doing the best they can. And then there's this notion of, for example, a medical reserve unit or a shelter unit or or something where they are reporting to somebody and they've been mobilized and, and they're doing something at the direction of someone else. And I think those, those are two different kinds of efforts. And um, so it, it's not always clear what we're talking about when we talk about community volunteers. 
Okay. Okay. You mean as in how do you define a community volunteer, Chuck? Is that what you're asking? Well, I mean, a volunteer is somebody who doesn't get paid. I mean, I think that that's, that's the easy way. But I'm saying the person that goes next door to help his neighbors is one kind. And the person who's told to report somewhere to do sandbags and is under, you know, gets disaster service worker uh, insurance coverage and things like that, that's that's a different matter. And and so we can be talking about the, the matter is more complex than just saying a volunteer. Yeah. And then there's kind of the in-between too, which is, you Absolutely. know, which I know San Francisco did. It's something the chief and I had chatted about, which is they had an adopt a drain program. And so people in their neighborhood could adopt the drain that they're going to keep clear on the street, right. you know, breaking the leaves away and stuff. And that's like, okay, well, you know, are you a, are you an activated volunteer at that stage or are you just helping your neighborhood at that stage? Yeah. And clearly the intent of it, I think, was help your neighborhood, you know, prevent flooding by adopting a drain, keep, keep your drain clean and you're helping out the city, essentially. Turned out to be a very effective program in San Francisco. Yeah, but so, okay. And then, and then the other one I had was around, you know, kind of data and analytics. The, the way I was thinking of doing that one is simply moving up the data and analytics on as, as the topic. And then I was just going to list all the different data and analytic requests that various directors have su suggested here underneath it and not try to categorize it into what the goal of the data and analytics was versus here's a bunch of things we think we should measure. We can decide what the goal of those measurements are in the in the next meeting. Does it does that make sense to the rest of you? Yeah, but I actually didn't specify any of the data analytics. No, I know, but but I think three three other directors or two other directors did. I, I did, right. and Rob did, and I believe Director Bernstein did. No, I know. So what I'm saying is that I would probably be in agreement just in general. So I might come up with something later on, but I'm pretty much in agreement with all of the data analytics issues that y'all have brought up. Okay. Any other input on that one? Okay. The, the next one I just wanted to get some input on is uh, yeah, a number of the directors mentioned different aspects of strategic planning, but then we had the earlier dialogue about kind of accreditation and where we're at in the accreditation process and so forth. Um, I, I'm not sure how to word this. I, I think where we were kind of settling out on it is it seemed like there was consistency amongst the directors that we need to kick off and do a multi-year strategic plan and get that process rolling during the course of this year. But I don't want to try to put words in anybody's mouth on that. But am I reflecting the kind of intent that most of you had on that? For me, it is. Um, I think we need to kick it off. Uh, we need to you know, at least kick it off and have a, a timeline, hopefully by the end of the year, to have one kind of in place, uh, uh, or, or at least be able to to review it and 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 vote on it. So, starting twenty twenty four, we we can we have some something to draw from um, in terms of because if we're gonna do this goal setting thing next year, then we need to have those goals reflected uh, as part of our uh, we're drawn upon from our strategic plan. Hey, Robert, can I just, um, Gary, let me, can I just ask Robert a question really quick? Yeah, because of course. <laughs> he brought up, he brought up this, this thing of um, making sure that we're keeping track of the progress every quarter, something along those lines. Yep. Adopt a policy <clears throat> of quarterly progress views and goals. Yeah. So Robert, do you think that once we get these things defined and, and approved next month that we could put, do, what do you think about putting these on the agenda? And, um, you know, at the different stages of, you know, certain things that the chief thinks that we should look at in terms of progress or some something where so that we know where things are just from a visual standpoint, maybe it's too micromanaging, but I just don't want things to get lost in, you know, the, the cracks, right? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm kind of just 
to give a little input there, I kind of with Robert on this, I think on a quarterly basis, we should review where we're at against the goals that we decide on and look at them and say, are we happy with our progress or not? And I think that's good board practice uh, yeah. because otherwise it's out of sight, out of mind. You get to the end of the year, you look back and go, oh, we missed them all. We didn't get what right. we Right. And so what I'm saying is it should the updates be on our monthly agenda. Monthly or quarterly. Yeah, either yeah. one. Quarterly, I think you know you, you know you can't put too much pressure on folks. Yeah. To get it okay. On a monthly basis. <laughs> yeah, I just want to. I mean, because those would be an agenda. That would be an agenda item. Then every quarter. Yeah, I, I, I specified months, but you know it can be, you know, from my perspective, I just you know four three times a year, you know, and figure it that way. And by the end of the year in December, you know, we we would have kind of a and a, a final year end update on where things are, and then we can reassess at that point to where we need to spill over into the next year. So, however that works. It, okay, okay, we can we can also talk about that in February before we finalize. Chuck, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I was going to answer in a, I, I think it, it kind of depends again what we're talking about. And I'm going back to this idea of a strategic plan. I think in general, and something we discussed at the last meeting, in general, people think it's a good idea to have a strategic plan. Just, I mean, it seems to be a consensus around that. Um, then the question is, what do we mean by a strategic plan? And in, in my language, a strategic plan is something that doesn't exceed five to 10 pages, for example, and is kind of a finite, limited document. The thing that you're referring to, Virginia, that was done in 2010 or 11, as I recall, was about 50 pages long and had over 500 um, strategic goals in it which were things like, you know, use a number two pencil instead of a number 2.5 pencil or whatever. And I'm I'm only <laughs> slightly exaggerating. Um, it had all these little shopping lists and things like that. That, And in a sense, that was one of the problems with, with Manny's strategic plan too, not his nine overarching objectives, but his plan was that it had all these little details that in fact aren't strategic. They're the operating plan that the staff should be looking at. So one of the reasons these things were never approved is because they were so long and unwieldy that they just weren't very useful. So when it comes time to discuss that, we ought to just be clear and define what it is, what the what the product is that we're talking about when we get all done. So, so I'm I'm with you, Chuck, on that. I, I like strategic plans that are five to 10 pages. I think that was the source of my question a little bit on this accreditation, because my impression from prior experiences around things that are accreditation related is they tend to become these very long laundry lists of very specific tasks that have to get done and very much report card driven, which is which is different than a strategic plan in in, in my view. So I think I think what it feels to me like is we're kind of commingling you know, Manny's work on accreditation with strategic plan, but I'm kind of with you a, a five to 10 page you know, kind of plan that outlined where we're going, what we want the district to look like five to 10 years from now is what the strategic plan is. It's not defining every little line item that's going to take place to get there. You know, one of the hard things, Gary, just because because so much of what we do is suppression and response, by its nature, a fire district isn't very strategic. In other words, it's much more tactical in terms of how it approaches its day in and day out life. So I think it's one of the strengths that the that the uh, board can can add to that direction is to say to look out there and not we're not trying to fight a fire today. We're trying to figure out what kind of fires we're going to be fighting, as you say, ten years from now. So I I, th I think that's that is an important part, but it doesn't have to be these massive things that have consumed so much time, and it's the reason they never were approved. Yeah, I, t I tend to agree. And I mean, I think it also encompasses things like, you know, where, where do things like our special operations groups, the different things, where do those fit into our long range plan? Where does, where does innovation fit in? You know, and how innovative do we want to be around, you know, next gen fire suppression, next gen equipment, you know, and approaches. Um, so I think it, to me, a strategic plan kind of defines those characteristics of how you want to define the district 
and then accreditation to me, and Chief can correct me if I'm misinterpreting this or Rob had, had strong opinions on this too. To me, accreditation is we're accrediting how we do fire response. But maybe I'm misinterpreting or, or minimizing what that accreditation process really was. It, it was primarily fire response. I yeah, mean, that, that's... yeah. Chief, do you have any thoughts on sure. what yeah, that I mean, accreditation is? Maybe yeah, to complement my thinking on that. It's, it's pretty broad base. I mean, it's specifically a, an accreditation process for fire agencies, but it, it deals with a community risk reduction. There's a heavy uh, leaning on that. And that's proactive things that you do rather than just being reactively responding. Uh, it's standards of cover, it's having a, a strategic plan. Um, a lot of it has to do with performance-based metrics. You know, it's data-driven, response time-driven, you know. Uh, so, you know, and that's, you know, that's been our challenge in, in my, you know, as I, I'm always a little bit skeptical on something that, you know, is going to get us a shiny gold star in the end. I want to make sure that whatever we do and whatever we invest in, has good good value for us. Um, that that being said, I mean I've been kind of on a, a mission to talk to people that have been through it, and the more I I talk to them, the more I come to understand that you know at least going through the process once may have really good value. That's what Chief Coyle and I are going to try and discern when we go um, to this this conference and chat with people that have been through it. Maintaining the accreditation for five, 10, it's in five-year increments that you have to renew it, you lose value. I was just talking to a fire chief whose organization has been accredited for 20 years. And they're like, it, it, you know, it's just nitpicky little stuff. None of it as they go through it is really making them better. You know, the, the most value that they gained was going through that initial process and really opening some things up. So it is, um, uh, you know, it's, it is not response oriented. It's really trying to bring us in alignment with some of the best practices that you see across city and local governments. Um, but yes, I mean, our, we're in the business of delivering response ultimately. So yeah. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? I can't really see everybody. Rob Solano, I don't know. Um, I don't see any hand. Rob, was that your hand? Yes, it is. Do you have a question or comment? I do not. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I don't see. I don't see any <laughs> other hands raised. So this is your last, the last chance to make a question or comment, and then we'll, Gary and I will just take it away from here, and then we'll present um, a synthesized document at the February meeting. And that was actually the only agenda item on our regular agenda. So, um, and since this is a special meeting, um, I don't, I am not going to be taking public comment on anything. Uh, so now we're at adjournment is, and I'm happy to adjourn our meeting right now at 7.38. So thank you afternoon. very, very much. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.